Hi, this is Billy Bean here with another World Update, Episode 60. Today's date, September 12, 2023. Some of the things we'll be covering. First Nations Unite. Morocco. Libya. Spy Exchange. Poland. Africa. And NATO. Article 5 Prep. Ukraine and North Korea. So let's get started. Okay, we have Benjamin Fulford bringing this out along with uh, Judy Byington about First Nations uniting against uh, the deep state. Both uh, recognize that they are being attacked now Benjamin Fulford is a Canadian journalist who's lived in uh, Japan for decades. He was with Forbes about 20 years. So the First Nations, and he's bringing this out in Canada, the First Nations in Canada in September are going to have a virtual meeting, and it is a war council they are convening because they understand they're definitely at war. The directed energy weapons have also been used in, uh, extensively in Canada, primarily against the First Nation lands to drive those people out. And we have this in Hawaii. Judy Byington brought that out, that 50 of the tribes along on all of the Hawaiian islands are now uniting and they want to become a separate nation. So we see First Nation peoples in Canada and Hawaii taking action. They understand as we most people in all nations understand, especially after that 2020 uh, release of a bioweapon globally. Yeah, we're all uh, in the mix. Now, Benjamin Fulford also brought this out, some new information about Purgosian that I put out in a recent video, uh, several sources, that was Jim Willie and other sources. And... Uh, Benjamin Fulford also says Purgosian, uh, his information from MI6 is it was a fake death. And so we have that going on. And Benjamin Fulford brings this out. He understands in September the deep state is going to release new virus, use directed energy weapons more, and blame the UFOs. Okay, now we'll move on to what's happening in Morocco so we know a few days ago that was September 8 I remember the date that was my birthday uh, there was a large earthquake in Morocco some say a 7.2 others a 6.8 and uh, Kerry Cassidy also brought that information out recently it was like Maui and that it involved directed energy weapons and we now believe that was the deep state plus the CCP so that's going on and in Morocco they currently have logged 2900 dead and about 6000 injured and now it's being reported by other sources that they saw mysterious lights in the sky, all across the sky, before the earthquake happened. And we had uh, JWTV also brought that out. So, yeah, it's the deep state attacking Morocco also. We understand the king of Morocco wasn't on board with the deep state concept of smart cities. And now we'll talk about Libya. 
what's going on there so we've got africa here's egypt libya you know we had that recent coup in niger i think that was gabon had a coup and now we're understanding recently chad and mali had coups algeria is up in this area so uh what's going on so libya had a storm daniel come across the mediterranean and it uh, burst two dams it's now being speculated was well, that weather warfare going on currently we have about three thousand dead and ten thousand missing so that's going on and we know so we have algeria mali chad niger uh, niger with the recent coups now all of these are involved are in place to uh, uh, facilitate or resist a major pipeline the deep state wants to put across Africa so it's being speculated what was the reason for this juicing up of the storm Daniel to the extent that it caused that damage in Libya so that's going on we are at war and now this crux this is the spy exchange being put forth okay in Germany locked up in jail is a uh, an assassin or spy Russian and his name is Vadim Krasikov And he killed in Germany a Czechan dissident on the orders of the KGB group in Russia. And so uh, Russia is putting this forth. We'll exchange Vadim Krasikov for Paul Whelan. who is an ex-marine arrested as a spy he's in russia in jail in 2020 and also evan gersh kovic and he works for the wall street journal and he's 31 years old he was arrested in russia as a spy so proposed a uh, spy exchange for russia wants vadim krasikov who's locked up in germany in exchange for paul whelan marine locked up in russia and also evan gershikovich a wall street journal reporter also locked up in russia so we'll see how this goes and now we have this Oh, and Poland. Anaya K is reporting Poland. Okay, here is Ukraine, Belarus, Poland. Now, Poland has put their troops, uh, they were a swift order by the Duda, the president of Poland. Get your troops out there. He gave the order in mid August. And they were supposed to be ready by the beginning of September. Well, they have the troops there, about 6,000. And what Anaya K is bringing out is the Poland uh, military doesn't provide food or laundry services for its military. So the Polish soldiers are having to go into the little towns, spend their own money at grocery stores for food and use the uh, local laundry services to wash their military 
uniforms. Anaya uh, wonders, why is all this going on when, you know, millions of dollars are being uh, supposedly paid out for the military? Good question. Okay, we have this about going on in Africa. So I brought up the uh, pipeline that, that the deep state wants to put in. Kerry Cassidy's bringing this out. 24 nations, African nations, have signed up with the BRICS, and they are aligning with Russia. And we have... In the future, 50 nations are going into military coups. That's on a global basis. I've heard that too. Yeah, so that's going on. Now, Jim Willie, PhD economist from uh, Costa Rica, has this to say about Niger. That was a recent coup. And uh, he's saying that in Africa, especially in Niger, there's next to zero support for France and other nations in NATO, and they don't trust them. And uh, he says it's more than uranium. It has to do with the Trans-Sahara Pipeline to go through Chad... Sudan, Mali, and these are all recent coup nations. And that Niger also wants to kick out France. So that's going on. And we have this. That, uh, oh yeah, in Mexico, it's also joined BRICS because recently the JB government wanted to force Mexico to use Monsanto chemicals. So now Mexico in the last month is going to join uh, the BRICS. So that's going on. Now we'll talk about what's going on in uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan. Iran. So let's get started. Monkey Works brought this out recently that the U.S. military was going to go into Azerbaijan and they were going to help uh, bring down a Christian community that's located right here. It's called Nagano Karabakh. And I couldn't quite understand. I had to research this because they were saying the separate group is part of Armenia. Armenia are all Christians and this group is Muslim. And Monkey said the U.S. military was going to go in here and help to take out the Christians in this area. What this is, uh, is a breakaway group and they've been broken away from Armenia for 30 years but they're still uh, classified as being a part of Azerbaijan and uh, Azerbaijan is now moving from Russia to US and Turkey who are going to help it with this fight to take in this area. And I believe this also has to do with some kind of oil and gas pipeline. So that's going on. And we have this. Uh, Azerbaijan then has put 10,000 troops on the border with this small breakaway area. Iran is supporting Armenia, and it has help from Russia 
and from Syria. So we see this split taking place. All right. And also Israel is supporting this group also. So, yeah, Israel and the U.S. are going to help take out this Christian community. And, yeah, so uh, there was going to be uh, a movement in this area, but Iran said no. This is according to Hal Turner a few days ago, September 9. And that Iran now has put its troops on the border. Okay, so that's going on. Yeah. So we see hot spots all over, don't we? Fighting and killing people. Sometimes when I'm thinking about this, I get re really down. Yeah, these are real flesh and blood people who are being killed. Okay, now we have this. We have Ukraine. We have NATO prepping for Article 5. Article 5 of NATO is an attack on one, is an attack on all. Now, recently, Romania uh, put forth Article 4, declaring that its territory was under attack, and that had to do with Russia attacking these port areas, Rennie, Ishmael, Odessa, because Ukraine was shipping in uh, weapons this way. Now, between Romania and Ukraine is a river, the Danube. And what happened was uh, when Russia attacked these ports, one of the drones landed in the water on this area. Romania finally was pressed by NATO to go with Article 4. NATO now has its response, which is preparatory for uh, to bring in NATO under Article 5. And so what it's doing is it's putting forth this exercise called Sea Breeze. And it began on 9-11 yesterday, where it's putting ships and divers and explosives, or people who could put down explosives, similar to what happened with N1-N2 pipeline, we believe. And it's going on until 9.15, this exercise. And they have divers, zappers uh, with boats. And a zapper is an elite engineer who can put down uh, landmines and bridges and demolitions. And also involved in this is the U.S., Bulgaria, the UK, and France. So that's going on, and that's what I call it. NATO prepping to be able to go into Article 5 because their ships, uh, I think there's 30 ships. Yeah. And they're right here on this side of the half of the river. Uh, with all the zappers and landmines going on. So, we don't have enough war. We need to get more, more, more. So, that's going on. Now, we'll talk about another exercise NATO is putting in place. Here is Ukraine. Here is uh, we have Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Finland. Finland is right on the border with Russia. And so we have out in this area and all in this area, 
We currently have NATO troops, 300,000. NATO really wants to get a full, full uh, spectrum war going. So they also have 30 ships out here. They have 3,000 NATO. These are uh, employ uh, troops on the ships along this waterway. And they're also uh, involving Sweden, uh, U.S., Canada, uh, Netherlands, Belgium, and France. So that's going on right now also, September 11 through 15. So if we can't get it going on between Ukraine and Romania, let's try this area right here. And the name of the exercise is Northern Coast. And this is Russia's Northern Coast. So that's going on. <laughs> We need to be in prayer for these people, yeah. Okay. So we'll find out what Russia did recently as a either a real event or a, a practice exercise. But uh, President Putin, five doomsday planes were in the air. One of them was a presidential uh, plane. And that happened nine... 10 and it flew from like moscow some of them from st petersburg and they went down to an area in the ural mountains where the russian government has their uh, continuity of government cog bunkers and they've flew out the five planes and when they got about in this area they turned off their transponders so yeah that's going on there in the ural mountains they have three large garrisons with thirty thousand each troops and other you know employees to keep it going yeah so that went on and medvedev uh a former president of Russia and currently a deputy with the Security Council of Russia said the U.S. possibly can expect another 9-11 attack. Nuke or bio. So yeah, that's going on. And now we have this. We have yeah recent events inside ukraine in kiev a major ammo depot was taken out and they had damage from kiev down to this turnopil location with uh, russia struck them with drones and missiles the night of 9 11 and early in the morning of 9 12 today they hit the largest uh, Ukraine ammo dump called the 20th Arsenal. They also hit an airport. And uh, it, apparently this happened a few days ago near Kiev. There was a meeting of NATO and Ukraine military. And the building, they were meeting in a police uh, building in Kiev. 40 were killed and dozens were injured. And now Russia is giving out these numbers. Ukraine has lost in the last week 4,100 troops. And during this counteroffensive, June 4 to September 11, Ukraine has lost 71,500 troops. So much death. Okay, that's going on. And now we have this. Kim Jong-un. Kim. 
Jong Un, the leader of North Korea, left North Korea Sunday. He's arrived, uh, I think that was sometime today. He was traveling by train and he's going to Russia to an undisclosed area to meet with President Putin. And they will discuss Russia getting ammo from North Korea in exchange for North Korea getting food and oil and gas from Russia. So now, a short prayer. I'll use the modified prayer of General Patton from World War II. Father, grant us fair weather for battle. Guide us from victory to victory and crush our enemies. I say to my family and friends, remain steady out there, continue to pray. It is good to remember that God is in charge and He is on the move. I love you and I'll see you soon.